Hey everybody. Okay. I've done a whole bunch of things to change this configuration around. I had some people complaining about the music being too loud and whatever. Let me know right away if the music's too loud. So today we're playing with robots. Uh, we are going to be doing uh, some cyborg stuff. So this is for a um, weekly AI challenge. I know everyone keeps asking about it. It's actually closed. It's like 60 people on Twitter and I got in really early on and um it's just, it's kind of a small group, but it motivated me to get to know the tools really well because I'm trying to win these things. And and we're minting the results and, you know, it's fun. It's just something to do that kind of like a driver. Um, so if, if you're asking for it, that's what that is. But we're going to be doing our own here because I have prizes that are coming. We actually have some labs that are going to be willing to print these things. So it's going to be pretty awesome. Uh, so Dave, we're playing with robots today or robots or cyborgs or whatever you want to call it. So it's... um that whole cyborg thing. And that's where we're going to go. So we're going to use both tools. We're going to use mid journey and we're going to use uh, dream studio or uh, stable diffusion. So we're going to use both those tools today and kind of see where we're going. Now I have already done some, uh, like you saw last night when we talked about the 1.5 um, version of stable diffusion that came out. So what I want to do is uh, kind of explore some of those as well, because we'll see which one we like better. I am not giving you the keywords for these because, I mean, we're going to work on them today, so you're going to see those keywords, but I'm not giving you the keywords for the ones I did yesterday because I'm trying to win that competition. And you know there's somebody here who's watching that who's going to be entering it, and then I'm like, similar stuff. So I'm not giving you those. But the ones we work on today, obviously you're going to see me as I make them, and there's some pretty big similarities, so you'll get it. Anyway, so we're going to pop over here to this other screen here, and uh, we'll work with it. So I have um, obviously mid journey just brought up here and uh, my goal is to kind of create this semi human robot kind of thing. And then I want to um, perfect it. You know, I want to prompt, I want to guide it, prompt engineering. I want to guide it into what I'm looking for. Uh, yes. Prompts are treasures. Uh, so it's the, it's that kind of that discovery process that we can do now um, because we can only do one at a time in mid journey. If we're using the test parameter, and a two by three ratio, which is my preference. I don't like the square. Um, it's gonna be very slow. So we're gonna try one on here, but at the same time, we're gonna go over to Dream Studio and do some at the same time with the same prompt and kind of see where we go. And then we'll we'll kind of feed back and forth on them. They have completely different looks. So we're not gonna look at one and go, well, this is the, the one all, you know, the answer. Because I find that stable diffusion, I may get nine crappy answers and like one amazing image all of a sudden it'll be like just wham out of nowhere and it'll be like everything i could have ever wanted it to be i mean journey tends to be a little more consistent well these are pretty good they're, they're pretty good and they're pretty good um but stable diffusion has time and again just blown me away by some amazing image uh, so let's play with that <clears throat> you'll see what i'm talking about i'm just going to start talking to the bot here um so the way i approach prompting and I, you see i haven't done this yet uh, on here, and I'm going to use different words than I did yesterday because I want to talk it through. We know we need a, cy a cyborg. Uh, now, a cyborg is, is kind of a robot, right? So we may actually want to use the word robot as well because if we use a synonym, uh, it's going to be more impressive to the bot to say, well, this is obviously something that's much more important than, than maybe I would have originally thought. So we cyborg, robot, we do android. So I'm not probably going to go with all of these. We'll probably just go with cyborg and android. And order is important. Uh, now, this was actually kind of unintentional is the way the clip works is um, the words that are toward the front are have more weight. So we're going to leave probably Cyborg near the front, uh, but we'll probably push Android near the back. Uh, again, it's kind of a checksum for the bot to go, mm, oh, yeah, I've got these covered. Oh, yeah, I, I must have screwed up originally. I see what he means now. He wants a Cyborg that's an Android. And maybe we have to word throw, throw the word robot in there. Who knows? We'll see. Um but I kind of want to, I want those to be in there. Now, what kind of setting do I want? Well, I'm, I'm a huge fan of the movie Blade Runner. Uh, so I'm just going to throw this in here. Notice I'm not using commas. I'm not using any sort of language. You can use natural language if you want, but it's just noise. Okay. The, the bot is looking for specific terms and a and the and is and things like that. Um, I really don't think have any bearing on anything. Now you could comma separate it. You could underscore separate it. You can space separate it. It doesn't matter as long as it's not two hyphens or two colons in mid journey anyway, because those are special, but pretty much anything else is just a noise parameter. Uh, because again, it's not guided on natural language. Now that is probably changing. Uh, 
because they're they're working with more like some of the bloom models and bigger models to kind of say can we guide more natural language into this uh, but currently it's kind of just a, a a list of items in order of importance think of it just that way and it's very easy uh, so what kind of style do we want it in like do we have a specific artist we like is this something that we want to do um, I actually have on my website here and I put a link down below for this this is my guide for everything and there's a visual reference to uh, this encyclopedia by Syncarnate. By the way, Syncarnate just won the Colorado State print competition with a mid-journey image. Uh, and it was in the news and everybody's all in up our arms about it. But he clearly said it was from mid-journey. But the judges obviously didn't know what that was. But after they realized what it is, they said that they still would have um, allowed it. They would have said, okay, um, you know, this it's still good art. So they took it. So I'm, this is just a list of the artists that are in mid-journey or not in mid-journey. By the way, if they're not in mid-journey, you'll notice that they have a certain look. Uh, this is the I don't know look. Uh, it's There's a certain mid-journey woman that you've seen before in the mid-journey colors. Uh, it drops back to this kind of teal uh, look. And you'll see these a lot, especially with uh, artists in the Pacific Rim. So your, your Chinese artists and, and Japanese artists and, and all that area they aren't very well represented in the model at this point, uh, which makes me sad because I'm a WLOP supporter and um, he's not in the model. It's fine. Uh, so what I want to find is something that's a little uh, less cartoony looking. Uh, I want something that's kind of real, but not mega real. Uh, so I'm just looking here. I'm going to go with some Alyssa Monks here. Let's do Alyssa Monks. And this is exactly the method that I use for, uh, for choosing these things, right? So we'll just go, um, so um, style of Alyssa Monks. Now who knows if it's if I could just put the word Alyssa Monks in there or, or not, but when I say style of, it tends to work pretty well. If you put by, by the way, like by Alyssa Monks, it'll actually try and sign Alyssa Monks' name to it. So if you're wondering what those signatures are from, it's because it knows that when a person is by something, they tend to, uh, <laughs> to, to, to try and sign it, which I thought was pretty entertaining. Um, all right, so we Android, uh, do we want any any special kind of treatment to it um i i did uh if you haven't been looking at it there's uh, a post every day now um, in the comment part of youtube um, the posts where i'm giving you a prompt of the day and a lot of those are ones that i use in this competition for the cyborg so if you're wondering what i'm using there's some big hints in there uh, and i'll uh, you're gonna get a few of them right now because of the ones i really i like to use because i like the way they look um uh, one is, uh, and I haven't really talked about this one much, but filigree, uh, which is obviously like, you know, a lace, a very, very slight pattern. I want something delicate for my Android. You do your own Android, but I'm going to do my own Android here. Hey, everybody. I see I see Bobby's here and Owl's here and Spooky's here. Thanks for you guys for coming in and chatting with me. Uh, so let's do um, filigree. Um, we want kind of a, I mean, like a cyberpunk so again, I'm just coming up with a vibe. I'm using words to describe the image that I'm, I'm trying to discover. And I know kind of what I want it to feel like, but I'm open-minded as to what I'm going to receive. Uh, like I said in a couple other videos, if you know exactly what you want and you have the image exactly in your head, paint it, right? Go paint it. Uh, this is for gathering ideas and doing something just explorational. Right? That's the whole reason behind this tool. Um, so filigree, cyberpunk, what so on. Well, let's let's make sure uh, again because I photograph women, I want a woman, uh, and I want this to be more focused on the face. So I have to draw attention to the face. And a lot of people are like, how do you get a full body out of this thing? You get a full body by talking about the pose or where they're standing or what they're doing. It's not just like putting full body because it goes, I don't know what you're saying. It's like people who use realistic horse because they get a horse that doesn't look realistic. It's like, oh, you meant a realistic horse and not a horse that's all messed up or one head like it's like what does that mean i see one head i see one head twice it's two one heads uh you'll get two heads by the way if you have uh, a taller um proportion because all these models so far are trained on squares and uh, unfortunately the first time these went through it just kind of cropped them uh so a lot of times the top of the head is missing because it didn't crop on the face it just cropped on the center of the image and I know a lot of that is being retrained uh, because it's a big problem, uh, but it was something that was completely unintentional. So if, you, if you're wondering why, but I will tell you one of the little secrets of getting multiple heads is um, I have it in here. 
I do not, uh, is if you get two faces, you get multiple faces, you'll find out that both those faces tend to be pretty well rendered. Uh, so if I get two heads, I usually save those because sometimes I'll get a, a picture that's more full body, but the face is just trash. I can go back and I can borrow one of the faces from those double headed ones, which I, they're, sometimes they're, they're really fabulously uh, appointed. So don't be so disappointed if you get the two headed ones. Make sure you save those because I've used them more than once to save me. All right. So we have a cyborg. So we have a beautiful cyborg. So I always use the word beautiful. I don't know. Oh, hey, all gifted another membership. Dude, you're awesome. You've done this a few times now. Wow, Chris, you lucky dog. Check you out. Thank you. Thank you all for doing that. So beautiful. Um, I mean, I put cyborg. I mean, I don't put a beautiful female cyborg. Now, that's probably good enough to get us um, somewhat a close up. But is there other things I can do? Uh, I like say glowing eyes. We're just going to throw these out there. Glowing eyes. Um, filigree armor, maybe cyberpunk blade runner, um, Android. Let's just kind of throw this out there. So I'm going to use a, a two to three aspect ratio. So it's taller, which I prefer. And, uh, we'll use test and that should be good for a run. So let's see what that looks like while that's running. Let's go over to dream studio and do the exact same thing. Um, obviously we have to change this ending part here because it doesn't use those and we'll do a height of 704 the cfg scale is like a, a chaos parameter and i like it at seven i know some people think that's really low they should be closer to 12 but i think seven is interesting uh, number of images let's get four out of this thing let's get three um and i'll we'll just leave everything else the way it is and we'll hit dream by the way nudity can be produced by this inadvertently so if you're offended by cartoon nipples then you know bigger problems okay so wait that's actually something else <clears throat> what the hell am i working on let's go back here it's not at all what i wanted i want this one so they go what the hell was that um We'll capitalize Blade Runner. Uh, just dabbling into relaxing ambient sounds at the moment. The music. We share the playlist. Yeah, it's actually um, it's actually down below. It's from Epidemic Sound. I believe it's listed below. Okay, so this worked out pretty well. Like I'm not unhappy with these. By the way, if you use Dream Studio, download everything right away. Um, because if you want it back later, you gotta pay for it again. Um, yeah, that must be it. That's okay. I'm going to roll it again here. Yep. Yeah, I must have forgotten something. That's okay. I copy and paste stuff all day long. We're all good. Um, I don't love any of those. But again, rules, you got to take them. <laughs> you know, like, hey, I wish I had some glowing parts for the chest or whatever. Um, they do like skin jobs of the future, don't they? All right, so the journey responded, and that's fine. So uh, automatically, because we only get one at a time, we're going to re-roll it automatically, and I'm going to go ahead and upsize it, just because. Because we get it for free. Buy that money, I'm going to bang on this re-roll button a few times until it starts to queue. And this is... Okay. Anyway, so you get the idea. Uh, how do I uncensor Dream Studio? You, you don't uncensor Dream Studio. Um, it's censored if it detects a nipple. But if you're using it in a collab notebook or you're using a, a local installation, then it's uncensored. So if you're motivated to uncensor it, then do so. Um, I use it mostly locally, uh, which is where all these come from. So if you're wondering where these are from, these are Stable Diffusion locally done. So I did these all myself. Um, and the way that I do this is I run it, uh, I run it here and I generate... 500 images or something like that and I go to bed I get up the next morning and I just whoop, get up the next morning and I call the whole set and I just kind of um, go through and see what I like or what I don't like there's no real secret to it other than that just going through and so it's a spray and pray like I talked about there'll be like eight meh images maybe a couple of really extra horrible <laughs> images and then I'll get one that is like holy mackerel and these are the ones that I saved these are my holy mackerels from yesterday so I just ran through this 
And if you look at these, you can kind of guess the keywords I used. I mean, if you, if you stare at this, it's pretty much the exact same thing we just talked about. Um, you can see that I'm using like a filigree or um, another type of textural. Because again, I don't want it to be just like a regular thing. I want something extraordinary, right? The, the goal is to have impact. It's um, when this image pops up, I want someone to go, wow. I don't want someone to pop it up and go, well, that is some um, technical, technically correct armor there. I see how that could protect the shoulder area from impact. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I'm looking for a little more shock value than that. Um, yeah, Dream Studio, or the uh, journey is talking to us. That's interesting. Uh, good. We'll upsize it automatically. This is the upsize version. Um, is it amazing? No, probably not. But uh, is do I like it better than the images I have now? No, but I think it's very cool. The glowing eye thing works out pretty well. Oops. Uh, let's go back and work on the prompt a bit. Uh, so we got pretty much the prompt we wanted right away. And now we just kind of explore it. Um, so I'm, I'm very happy with, with it already. Back. Just going to take this. And let's, uh, oops, let's play with it a bit. So beautiful female cyborg. That's working pretty well. Glowing eyes. Let's get rid of the glowing eyes. Um, filigree armor. Or let's keep glowing eyes. But let's add more. I want a little bit more body shown. Uh, so in order to show more body, I have to kind of impress upon it that I need to see more. But instead of saying like more body, because it'd be like, what for me? Um, I think the way to do this would be to indicate something that requires a little bit wider camera. Um, so I'm going to go with flowing hair. So I like that one quite a bit. So flowing hair, because if it's long flowing hair, then I would expect it to kind of swoop down maybe the middle of the back. Uh, so it, it pull the camera back a little bit to be able to prove to me that the hair did that. That's that's anyway, that's the strategy I'm going with here. By the way, we cannot use prompt waiting um, because the, um, oh, sorry. All oh, music, did you just donate to the stream? Dude, <laughs> you're awesome, thank you. I'm like, what's CHF? And that must be a, uh, <laughs> that must be a currency that I'm not used to seeing. Well, thank you so much, man. You're awesome. You've gifted a couple different uh, people now. That's very cool of you, man. I appreciate you. I appreciate you. I said, beautiful female Sarbo, long flowing hair. Should back the camera out a bit. Glowing eyes, sure. Filigree armor. Okay. Cyberpunk, Blade Runner. Um, the Blade Runner probably is helping more with the background than anything else. Um, Alyssa Monks probably is, is not real happy with this image so far, but what this, why this artist works is when I was looking through these, um, uh, the style encyclopedia, I'm looking for something that looks more like a human face to me than something that's like, uh, some of these that just don't, they don't appeal to me for this thing, like to do, uh, Alfonso Mucha, which everyone does. You see the type of artwork that. Alfonso does. If you like that for your image, that's great, but don't just throw it in there because you see great images that use it. I have a reason behind the look. Uh, so if we go back here, um, well, here's our new one we just got. That's actually pretty sexy. Like that's a good one to me. That's kind of what I was looking for. So I'm going to upsize it and re-roll it. This one, we'll give this one a, a heart. That's good. So I'll find some or I'll list some monks and uh, I would say let's throw in uh, 8K. So 8K or maybe 4K. 4K is less depth of field than 8K. 8K seems to have a really aggressive depth of field. Again, it's because something that is an 8K monitor tends to go with that really high end, super crisp look. It doesn't mean you're going to get an 8K image out of it. OK, it's it's a look. It's it's like uh, asking for insanely detailed or highly detailed. I think those are all looks. That you're asking for. And speaking of which, let's throw that in there too. I kind of look at it like highly detailed is, a, is an artist. Um, 4K is an artist. Octane render is an artist. In fact, I kind of like the octane render here better than the 4K. Maybe instead of an octane render, let's use V-Ray, which is another one. Um, you can also do ZBrush. So ZBrush, which I own and use, uh, if you're into clay modeling, uh, on a PC, the way the ZBrush images look is they always have a blank background because the 
the ZBrush interface makes these amazing, amazing characters with blank backgrounds. So if you're trying to remove something, um, then it's going to to um, give you that flat background. I may not want that though. Like I want more of a scene out of this. Uh, why did it heart the art? It tells the bot that I liked it. Yeah, you should do that to every image that pops up. If you get uh, an image back from the bot, you should make sure you rate that image because that helps training um, as they're doing things. So, so these are pretty promising. I like these. Uh, but again, they're a little close. Uh, so rather than saying something like goofy, like full body, which isn't really going to do anything, um, I want to I want to pull it back a bit. I think the long flowing hair is going to do that for us. So ZBrush would kind of remove the background. Um, but uh, I'm going to put V-Ray in here instead because that should allow it to have a background. The V-Ray is just a renderer. Um, you could use CryEngine as well from the, the Crisis video game series, but that's going to kind of probably put it outdoors and make it more video game looking. Uh, Unreal Engine is another option here. Um, again, somewhat photographic, uh, but I don't know, let's put ZBrush in there. Just so you kind of see what, what that is probably going to look like. Again, I haven't done these before, so we're just going to find out. All right, let's uh, copy this and run that. And uh, we'll wait for that to run. We'll go back to Dream Studio and replace this old train back here. So it's the exact same thing. And we'll just run these and see what they look like. Oh, I forgot to test P. Did I not put that on there? I put test. Test is fine. Okay. So I don't know what happened here. This is what this is when one part of the factory and the other part of the factory aren't, aren't communicating very well. Yeah. So this uh, this model here probably didn't make it to production. Uh, that's okay. And again, I pulled the camera back a bit, but I, I really don't like that image at all. Let's roll it again. And I think the. Uh, this ZBrush thing is really kind of flattening my my background. You see how the background is very blah now? It's taking a lot of that personality out of it. Um, so I'm going to want, I don't want that. So I'm going to go ahead and remove the ZBrush part. Again, that filigree part, that little lace bit here, I think is pretty decent. So I like that one. Also, same thing, the glowing eyes, filigree. So you see, if you look at the prompt, it completely describes the, the scene we've asked for. We asked for the filigree, glowing eyes, beautiful female, cyborg. I mean, well, the image we get describes the prompt perfectly. It's not this big comma delimited list of whatever. Uh, so the test that you see there is... Um, is for the new beta. Let's throw the test P. So test P is a photographic version of test. Um, I tend to prefer the regular test, but um, it varies. Oh, let's also throw the creative on there. Um, let's get rid of the ZBrush part. Uh, cycles, yeah, I could use the cycles blender run as well. Um, yes, the 1.5 is available only online at the moment. It was just released last night, uh, right before I went to bed. Oops. Oh, they got rid of the creative flag. Okay. Run with that without the ZBrush on it. Oh, so this turned out pretty nice, but again, I wanted to back up a bit. So let's see how long flowing hair um, helps that. It wasn't on this one, so we didn't have long flowing hair for this prompt. This is uh, kind of what I'm doing here. Now, you get a full body by asking it to be a pose that, that shows the full body. Uh, for example, if we want to do um, a blue, long flowing hair, glowing eyes. So, we, so what do we want her to be doing? Is she um, she's uh, standing on a spaceship? Okay. With long flowing hair. So again, I'm trying to make it into English now. But again, I don't really think this affects anything. Um, and she's, she's highly detailed. She's um, floating, perhaps. Or oh, she can't be standing and floating, can she? She's, um, I'm going to say another word. She's standing on something. She's, she's, um, let's just use standing on something. See how it goes. But this should automatically back the camera up a bit because it has to prove to us that she's standing on something. 
so it's not using full body and things like this. Uh, people keep saying use full body. It doesn't know what that means per se. You want to try and use a scene that describes a full body in action. Like you could do, you know, karate or, you know, could throw something in. It's like, an, ah, let's do that. Actually, I like that idea. Um, do fighting. Karate. Yeah. So the things that that kind of push it, you know, purge. Yeah, all these are you guys have great ideas. Yes, it's, it's you try and do. Didn't I put two? Then I put two. You're right. Two dashes. I get so used to so stable diffusion, which is the the Dream Studio only uses one dash, and I swear I keep clicking between the two. Um, but so in order to get a full body, you have to tell it something that is full body. Yeah, I know it's two dashes. So this is a but stable diffusion is one dash. So. Uh, and I usually use a local installation. As I said, I don't you normally use that. All right, so the camera backed up a bit. Um, I like this one. This one's, eh, this, eh, roll it again. See how this goes. But so, so the discovery of a prompt is just start with the basic picture and a couple synonyms for it. Uh, well, we lose on that one. That one apparently had some breasticles in it, so we don't get that one. But I do like these eyes. I don't know what happened here again. Note at the factory, somebody didn't get the memo. Roll that one again. I would roll these uh, here on my local machine and do the stream that way, but I I tried to do that last week and it didn't work out very well. Um, beautiful, fine. This one I don't want. Um, humanoid, that's good. I like that. Humanoid is good. Okay, so. Um, we still don't have the long hair here, so we still have a closer picture, but I like this one. Pull that one. Is Dream Studio free? No, it has a cost, but it's, um, like I paid 10 pounds for it. Uh, and I've got about like 2000 some odd points available. So, um, that's a lot. I mean, it, it's, it's pennies per thing. But they're, the goal is for them to get the price of this down a lot farther. So you're going to see the this price drop. But as, a, as a, some people are pointing out, you can use a collab for free or you can download it for free um, on your machine if you have an NVIDIA card with some with a good amount of RAM. If you have AMD um, or things like that, you may not get as much love with it. It doesn't work as well. Um, so just be aware that there's it's harder to get the AMD to work than the NVIDIA, which is simple. Okay, so pretty happy with these. So here's our long flowing hair. Back the camera up a bit. Um, don't know that I love the image, so let's roll it again. But this is my, my discovery process. Now, because I'm using relaxed mode here, so you see I'm relaxed and private, that means that I can basically do this all day long. And uh, it doesn't cost me anything. I pay... $30 a month for the ability to use Relax, and I pay an additional 20 to have it in private. And again, I probably don't need to use it in private. And by the way, I am talking to the bot directly. You can you can right click and say direct or choose DM, or not close DM, but it'll say you want a direct message. You can work with the bot directly. Um, and you have to be a paid member to do that. But it's a lot nicer than sitting in one of these rooms with they're, they're flying by so fast. Can you see what's going on? Um, I don't even tend to enjoy that right So as far as the robot, like I want to get into Photoshop here too. Um, why I like some of these, like this one has just got so much gear and stuff going on. Um, I really like it, but I don't really like the face so much. Uh, so if I were going to take this one and do it, I think we'd swap the face out on it. Um, this one is just fantastic in almost every way. I mean, love everything about it except for this white spot here. Um, but I would want to add some something a little bit more in the background. We have looks like a planet back here. I'm not really sure, uh, but it's so light that it's just a distraction. So the first thing I do is remove those and then we work with this. I would need to open up this a little bit more on this side because I think she's a little crowded here. Um, again, these are all stable diffusion, by the way. Um, they're ones that I didn't. I just let it run. And these are what I got out of it. I would love the arm on this one, like the way the arm is done. By the way, these have all been run through the the uh, real ESR GAN, so they're bigger. 
Um, but I did not run them through the base fixing GAN, the GFP GAN. So if you're wondering why it's bigger, um, that reason. this one I thought was just cute. It's just cute. And I think this one is one of my favorites. So I might be, I might be using this one for my entry. I'm not sure. Obviously I have to do some stuff to it to make it mine, but I loved it. I just think it's, it's adorable. And again, it's just the same exact variables. It's just the alignment of the stars created this image. So fine. Uh, I like it because it's so mechanical. I like this one a lot too. Uh, although I don't like the head behind her, but I like so much uh, else about the form here. Um, oh, these have, these have been upgraded or upsized. I should love this one. I guess those hadn't been run through the game like I thought they had. Uh, nice uh, little chin profile there. Let's we'll see what we got here. That's nice. Again, long flowing hair gave us something. Glowing eyes is a little bit not the color I would have selected, but um, roll it again and upsize it. Oops. And these all used the same exact set of keywords or prompts. Okay. So I'm not going to tell you what they are because, again, I'm in competition right now and I don't need you to have the same thing I have. But you can kind of see how I got there. And they're not so dissimilar to what you see here. Um, you know, women of the multiverse. Uh, but the idea is just, again, I have it installed locally and I have a, I have a 3080 card. Um, I got really lucky and I bought it right before everything got really hot. Um, like, like when they disappeared in the market, I'd already had mine about a year by the time that happened. And I got it on a Black Friday. So I actually got it for like 600 bucks or whatever, which I think they're back down to close to that now. Uh, but this, this card is good enough for a 768 by 512, no bigger. And it is running so close to not working locally. Um, so I just put it to 500 images and I walk away and overnight and let it bake in the morning, get up and see what I've got. Now, see, these are my favorites so far. Um, I could just love this one. The, the, the face is good. This headdress is great. Great atmosphere to it. And I've deleted a lot of the like horribly crappy ones. So you're, you're seeing the, the end result. It's pretty. You're not seeing the, <laughs> the other ones that were extra terror bad um, yeah the eyes can be atrocious these these are not gand right now so these are the eyes that i got and they're not they're not horrible i mean well i say that and then i bring this one but again i have images with two faces and those two face images all have a better face uh, so to go in and grab that is, is fairly easy so here do we like this one i kind of like this side better than this side so i'm going to upgrade it just because i want that I maybe want that eye. The thing is, I collect all this stuff. I collect freaking everything. Because you never know where you're going to want it. Um, so best just to take it all. This one, I, I like the body, but I didn't really care for the, the hat again. And the hair is meh. In fact, I don't even know why I have this image. I should just leave it. Hey, look at that. It went away. Love this one. This is just beautiful. Again, this one's pretty good. Again, good. Love this one. And what I do is I rate them. Uh, so a five stars to me, like I, I really like this one. Then I'll click six, which makes it red. And those are my selected ones. Those are the ones that I know that I'm really going to love. Um, so yeah, that's kind of how I'm going through and I'm looking at them. There we go. So here's our standing on spaceship one. You can see what it did. It pulled the camera back so it can prove the fact that we're standing on spaceship. So using full body and whatever, it doesn't know what that means. Give it a scenario. Uh, or give it an, if, for example, if there was an artist who made only pictures of people standing and never pictures of anyone that was closer, if you use that artist, you're going to make it do that. Uh, for example, I've used artists before that are landscape photographers. Uh, in fact, one of the keyword prompts I gave um, on my, um, my YouTube community area there is mostly an architectural prompt. In fact, it is an architectural prompt. And if you give it a person and that prompt, the person may not be rendered. So you have to really kind of add a lot of synonyms to force it into adding a person. And then that person's probably going to be drawn in a weird way. So just note that that the artist and the look determine a lot about how this is going to be done. So this is decent. We'll upsize it and we'll re-roll it. Um, and we can run variations on it, but I mean, I don't need variations on this. I give me another one. Smash the like button. Yes. Thank you so much for mentioning that. 
Yes, there's some guy or a group of people who downvote every single video I put out, every single one of them. So now that I mentioned, there'll be a bunch of people who are like, oh yeah, well, we're going to join that. So if you do like these videos and you want to see them keep coming, you have to click that like, that like button. It's the only way new people see these videos. Otherwise, it's just for you people, which is fine. But it'd be nice if the channel would grow. Um, anyway, so these are the ones I created, as I said, the last couple of nights. This one, I will tell you, is a ZBrush one. So it was done with ZBrush. So you see that there's no background um, because, again, ZBrush doesn't use a background. And um, can I even show you that? Um, I can load ZBrush in while we're um, in a stream. Try it. Um, hopefully it won't screw things up. But Let's see if it loads here. Uh, yes, re repetition matters quite a bit when prompting. Um, yes, quite a bit. So if I go in here and we bring in like a dog. Oops. So here's our dog in uh, in ZBrush. And that's why I had this this 3D. Uh, you guys are always wondering about what this 3D mouse is over here. That's what this is for. So ZBrush, you can see it's everything's on a gray background. So if I if I upgrade the if I get more detail on this on this dog and I start sculpting it or whatever I'm doing. You know, hey, look, I'm making a giant dog. Then this you can see the background looks very gray and flat. And that's the reason why um, this, if you say ZBrush, you're going to get a gray flat background because that's the look that it has. So I see people just spraying these things on. It's like one of 15 artists have a reason as to why you're using each prompt. Don't just throw them all out there. Now, it's not to say that there aren't some great little inventions that people have stumbled upon, but um, <laughs> yeah. Imagine being the peeps that downvote for power. And there are people that do that. There are people. Um, this is beautiful. These are nice. I don't know what this is, but um, I like the rest of it. And she almost has the right number of fingers. <laughs> I love this one. This is cool. Anyway, so these are the ones I went through. Let's see. Discord is knocking on our door here. Let's go see what we're doing. There we go. Another long flowing hair. So you see, pulled the camera back. Um, different. I don't know that I love it. Let's vary this one and where you roll it. This one here. And um, I don't even know what that is, but it's kind of cool. Kind of cool. But again, standing on spaceship. Uh, it's like the word um, beautiful, for example. A lot of people just throw it at the beginning. Beautiful means that, let's say, for example, if I say to you, woman, and you can go, okay, well, I, I don't know how to show you it's a woman. Um, well, I guess I'd, I'd have to show you her figure, right, in some way. But if I would say beautiful, the only way for you to prove to me it's beautiful is if you show me the face, right? So you have to show me the face or you say the eyes, look at her eyes. She's smiling. If you say things like this, it knows that the camera has to be closer. Like if she's way down the hallway and she's this big in the scene and you say smiling, how do we know that? So by using a term like smiling, you're telling it, I have to see that she's smiling. The same thing with full body. If you ask for full body, it's like, I don't know. What does full body mean? Say she's standing at something. Oh, she's standing. I see what you want. You want she's standing in a place. She's you can see her feet. Um, you could you could say what kind of shoes she's got, um, for example. Yeah, always use this rating system for everything you generate, by the way. That you there's no excuse not to do that. Yes, fit, happy accidents are 50% of creative process. Absolutely. This just replaces sketching for me, right? That's all we're kind of doing with it. We're fancy sketching. But this this like for this example this one here we don't have um full body and we don't have long flowing hair so again the camera is closer uh, where some of these this one is i will tell you this one these are using long flowing hair it's ex using those exact terms because again it pulls the camera back to pretty much the the position is a portrait photographer that i really like i'm anywhere from quads up to this portrait to me this is like a good thing um, and uh, yeah. so you can kind of get the idea of where I'm going with the. And now I'm getting, now I'm way back. Like these are ones I have saved from a long time ago and hope there's no nudes in here. Because stable diffusion locally will generate breasts, but um, usually they're really weird. <laughs> but you can do, like, you can do things like this. I can do things like this in stable diffusion where in mid journey, this image is pretty much impossible uh, to generate. Thing like this. And I didn't ask for, this is not the word bikini, by the way, because that's a really frustrating term over on mid journey. I get it. But 
I like this style of art and I like this and this is great to me. I don't need to be sexy. Love this image too. So these are all ones I need to work on. I have so many in here. Um, I have so many in here. Uh, is a replay available? Yes. Actually, what's interesting about that is all these live streams that I do every week are replayable for members. So after about 24 hours or so, whenever the, the people kind of stop watching it, it moves into the memory area forever. And there are probably 70 or 80 of these in there. Uh, and a lot of them are photography oriented, me retouching skin and doing different things like that. So if you're into that kind of thing, for five bucks a month, you get access to all of those videos. And again, you can watch them whenever you want to. So for the price of a Starbucks here, helping keep the channel alive. I really appreciate that. I love this one too. Um, but if you ever get a signature in your in your thing, it's usually the signature of who you said it was by. So if you said by this person, it tends to try and write that person's name, which I thought was kind of funny. Anyway, so let's retouch one, right? Let's let's do something. Uh, oops. Because my goal was to produce a piece of art today, not to just talk about it. Um, that's just weird. I don't know that I love that one. Um, we already rated this one. Yeah, here we go. This one's fine. I don't know that I loved any of these. Um, there's some of these other ones that I just really like a lot more. Once you guys have a vote, this one's pretty damn good. I do like it. quite a bit. Actually. Can't wait for the to get the full AR. Yeah, I I'm really waiting for other other capabilities in this, but um, this is pretty decent. Nice. It's very nice. But I like this this kind of somewhat illustrated look too. Let's open that one in Photoshop. We're just gonna play with it a bit here in and experiment. Grab your drink. I have some nice mugs that have my photography on the side of it there. Isn't that cute? Probably not in focus. All right, so while we're doing that, let me drag this up. Go to desk. Grab. Just do it. And I have um These are just ones we just grab. Um Do I want to put this face on this body? Will I, be, will I like that? Um, I don't know that I... I'm just kind of brainstorming here like where I want to go. Um, what's up? Everybody's coming in a little late. You're all good. Everybody's good. Um, let's go back here. To... I kind of want to work on this one. I really like I really like quite a few of these, actually. This one's just too damn adorable. Yeah, work on that one. Work on that one. And let's work on... Quite a, and quite a few of these are, are really good. Um, and these are not... Um, at 2700 pixels in the long edge. So these have been run through the the upsizer one time. Yes, thank you for smashing the like button. And thank you for all for, for donating too. That was nice. And buying that membership. That was awesome too. So the person who got the membership, you have access to all. So every month, by the way, I upload a free texture uh, that are hand-painted textures, by the way. So they're not mid-journey textures um, that you guys can use, uh, for whatever you want to use. In fact, let's use it on this one. I just downloaded one. I just uploaded one this morning. We can go to YouTube professionals textures and it's, um, summertime. It's this one. Put it in there. So the way these use these use these textures is you basically just line them up at the background. I have snap on, so it just snaps right into place. Whoop. 
like this. Um, and I, what I typically want to do is separate. I'm going to change my camera angle too so you guys can see what I'm typing and stuff. Um, well, if that camera worked. Oh, there it is. I was, hey, where'd it go? You guys can see the what I'm doing down here instead of looking at the side of my head. Um, what I want to do is I want to select her first of all and get her subject. So we're just going to use select subject. Good enough. And I, I want to kind of perfect it a bit. So I just do select and I hold on shift and do select and mask here. And then I just kind of go around it real fast. Don't have to be super specific with it. Um, one better than that, though. We'll go check on those things like here. The mid journey biscuits are done. We can hear the alert. Doesn't it be perfect? I'm um, going to use. Um, uh, planning mode anyway. Save it. Yeah. Let's look at my journey here. Uh, found out you got another um, WEF member prime minister and you, I don't know what that means. not follow world politics very much. Uh, you learn so much and you appreciate the, the uh, thing. Um, do I have any favorite sites uh, for news about it? No, not really. Uh, mostly what I'm getting is from the developer directly. Um, hey, here's another one for standing. This must be a variation. Other one. That's actually pretty decent though. Like that looks pretty good. Um, I mean, if you were to describe this, you could probably <laughs> read exactly this, right? Uh, besides learning as a whole in the programming, I learn individual technique tendencies per account um, from doing a lot of renders. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, just, you just have a style to it. You just develop a style. Okay. I like this one a lot better. This is a lot, just a lot more interesting. So just go here, and I'm going to take that, and I'm going to hold on my Alt key and just mask it out, and then set it to, an, like, an overlay. Or like, overlay's fine, and we've got to change the color, though, so... Or a hue and saturation on top of it. And it's almost always 180 degrees. I don't know why, but we'll start there. Knock it down. Purple. And then uh, the other thing you gotta remember is that if this is correct, uh, photographically, this cannot be in focus and this also be in focus. And obviously this hasn't been upsized yet, so it's still tiny. Uh, so we have to blur this layer. Fix. It's fine. Anyway, so that's how you use the textures that um, you guys get every month as being people who support the channel. So there you go. That's so that's um, helps. You know, again, this is the ZBrush or not quite the ZBrush look, but that's better. And then we would continue on with that. Like maybe do some planets or something in the background, but we have this, um, this background here. Let's grab that and pull it in. Oops. Grab the background, pull it in, get it pulled out in Something like this. And then again, this, well, let's get rid of the texture for now. Focus on We can use the same mask, which is nice. Sure, sure, reset everything. For example, it's really hard to tell what color is the correct color here. Uh, so what I do is I use a trick. Um, just use a solid color and pick any gray and then change it to luminosity. And this may look really disturbing to look at and we can even make it worse by adding a curve to it. Um, and if the curve is aggressive you can kind of get an idea of the color differences between these two layers which is what we're looking for right here so now i know that if i'm dealing with this this layer here needs to shift so that it matches that one so again 180 degrees just like i said before and then i can decide how much saturation is appropriate but this these tend to have the same color match now so if i remove these these sheet layers that's correct one. Now I just got to decide how much saturation it hit. Doesn't look very good. So it looks like just a little bit of saturation, just like she would have. So if we check it again, 
this looks good. So this is my my method for determining coloration. As you can even see the red in her neck there. Um, so it was there even before we started. And if we want this summertime thing to go up here. And I would probably even do it over the whole image. If I wanted to shift this, which I don't. Um, this background needs to also have an oil bunny mode. Which is going to change this. Probably change this. So. So desaturated. So if you pull saturation all the way down, then obviously hue doesn't do anything. Um, I kind of want the background to be about the same luminosity as the original background. So if we look at the original one, this looks pretty good. Otherwise, you get a halo around everything and you got to resolve that, which sucks. Something like that, maybe. Uh, the other problem is this is, again, it's a background and it cannot be in focus. If it's way behind her. I have to blur it. Don't forget this step. Everyone forgets this. It actually makes it a lot easier to look at the images too that way. Morgan. Let me standing again. She's doing karate. She's fighting. We'll re-roll that one. This is interesting. You know, this gives me an idea. Um, one of the other ones I like to do from time to time, and it looks completely ridiculous. So let's do this, but let's do a GoPro footage. So it should have her hand out, <laughs> you know, um, like if she were holding a GoPro. Uh, are there any subjects you had difficulty generating? For me, it's been mermaids. Yeah, uh, that's that's a tough one. Um, again, if you're going to do mermaids, you have to give it an artist that or a photographer or someone who has that type of look. You know, the full body laying down thing is easier than just giving it mermaid. Uh, because it's a mermaid by by um, H.R. Geiger is going to look a lot different than a mermaid by somebody else. So having a good idea of what you want artist-wise would help you a lot. In the so, so this looks a lot better now that we've softened the background. But you can see that tonal, that tonal arrangement we made on this helps a lot to kind of sell it. Uh, if I want to, uh, now I can begin the process of, of um, color grading it. So that's... Curves, and I would probably just go into auto and see if I could find one that works for me right away. This maybe so it just adds a slight correction tonally, and then we can um, well, we could do a color lookup on it too. That's always fun. Kind of look through. These are the very quick and easy ways to do this, obviously. So we're, because this is a live stream and we want to like, come on, get it done. This is the direction I would probably go. Just for today. I don't love any of these. To me, every, every image has a way that it wants to be drawn. And your job is to find it. Um, it's not apply some sort of a filter and go I'm done with it you got to find the the one that really speaks to it right okay so this one goes a completely the wrong direction for me it's not standing like the other one was uh, the whole fighting that it's just not working I, I could probably move these up closer um, but uh, this one looks like an, uh, a scene from the movie ink if you haven't seen that movie variations okay let's do another one here um, that's a complicated this is yeah, this one's just too cute I love it it's such a little, little stretched metal 
Um, we could, I need to upsize this one and I cannot do that during the stream, by the way, because that will bring everything to its knees. But I really need to upsize this before I begin to work on the eyes or any of the details because this is all going to get trashed. Um, so upsize first before you do this process, right? Um, that's pretty, pretty cool. The one I'm waiting for is the one where it's at the GoPro footage. <laughs> That's the one I'm looking forward to seeing. Uh, so we go back to... So good. If you drag it into the, the layer platen, it will create a new document. I think it's kind of counterintuitive, like you think go the other direction. The only thing that bothers me with this one is it's got this like gradient at the bottom here. I want to get rid of that. Um, by going in here doing the gradient tool and we can pull it the other direction. Yeah, and there's this black thing behind her too. I don't know what this I gotta get her well. Anyway, before I get before I get into like doing all this with this image, I would try and decide if, if this is an image that I want to keep, like if there's things about it that I love. Um, so I probably just I need to recrop it because the crop is wrong. Whenever you whenever you're looking at something that the character, if they're facing one way, then they have to be either at the midline or a little behind it uh, so that there's breathing room on this side. If not, it creates a sense of tension, um, which might be your intention, but uh, typically that's not desirable. So in fact, I'm actually going to go with which is is actually the golden ratio. So this is the same thing as golden ratio. Um, it is not the rule of thirds, by the way, that's lazy. A rule of thirds is almost the golden ratio, but people are like, well, I don't know. It's, it looks like about a third. Let's just call it the rule of thirds. It's not a third. Okay. So maybe I go with this because this this creates a sense of tension, but this distance here, this is too close. Now this is much more reasonable for me. Um, yes, this is, there we go. Full body again, standing. Uh, this is actually pretty cool. I like the background quite a bit on this one. So let's upsize that one. What are we doing here? Um, this is the fighting one, karate. The GoPro one. <laughs> I want this one. I just want to see what it's going to look like. Uh, so when we do this one, we're actually going to use a content aware and have it fill out the rest of the image um, because that's really simple. And that was it. That's all we needed to do there. Whatever this background, this other stuff is, is back here. We need to get rid of all that. And the, there's a tool for that, and that's the patch tool. Just use it. Grab this whole thing here and just pick another spot. Patch tool is... I love the patch tool. Patch tool all day long almost every day think of it like a texture replacement tool it's so handy just don't touch like you gotta be really careful not to touch the edges there we do that it's gonna go to hell real quick and this we'll have to get in there with this different tool for that and this thing here Then we can make this collection. Collection, and we need like a, a Then we can use a clone stamp, stamp from over here or something. This has to be roughly correct, a brighter area. Looks like one pixel is too much. Let's do this again. Come on. Come on, Photoshop. We can do this. Ah. Okay. Photoshop, just do what I'm telling you to do here. I'm trying to right click on that and it won't let me. God, that was weird. 
Uh, we want to... Want to... Oh, I see what I did. I dropped I dropped it back. That's where I need to go. I need to go all the way back to the pen tool. We want to buy half a pixel. That's the only tool in Photoshop where you can actually um, actually request things back. We we'll only need to get rid of it close to the body, right? We don't we don't have to worry about this other part. Then we can use the patch tool again. A little bit of work there. Was mid-journey, sorry. I was telling us something. Oh, our GoPro one? Oh, that's lame. Roll it again. I want GoPro footage. I want that thing like up close. It turned out. It turned out pretty decent. Okay, we want here texture-wise. We want a texture. Let's go grab a texture. And I know what texture I these are all textures I've collected over the years, by the way. I put a, a link down below to the one that I use quite often. Today we're going to use, try one of the, oh, this Aqueous Sun. God, I bought this set. I didn't even know how. I think I like this one. Set it. We need to we need to select her real quick. And then we can just apply it over the top of this. Then we need to change the color of this because it's not this color. Kind of a action y feel to it, maybe. trying to do a little bit of figure to ground. I don't want the darkest part of her face to be obscured by this thing that masks. Yeah, I could throw I could throw some of the outtakes into the um, discord. Jersey. Just going to use the this uh, this tablet, by the way, XP Pen sent me this. I think I've shown you guys this before. Instead of my Wacom, which is sitting over here and being ignored, uh, this just works when I turn it on every time. So it's become my my go-to. So thanks to XP Pen for sending me this. Um, they heard me whining about the Wacom and they took the advantage and got me this, uh, which was awesome. So I'm very happy with it. It's a little bigger than I would want it to be, but um, overall, I really like it. I need to take time to configure these instead of reaching up here. Because I only really use like five or six different keys. I mean, I know, I mean, I know Photoshop really damn well, um, but I don't. Uh, oh, you know what I did? I shifted the mask. That's why this is off. I'm like, what? Why is the mask off? There we go. I shifted the mask right there, and I didn't notice. So, so I'm sitting there going, "Why is there a gap back here?" There we go. Oh, my bad. Kate it. Oops. These together. Get it. And oh, 
little action hero kind of feel to it, I think. And I wonder if I group these again and if I duplicate them, is that better? Is that darkness too much? So something as simple as that, like just has a little bit of a feel to it. A little something, something. These need to be blurred. So just start collecting textures everywhere. I mean, as I said, one I linked to down below, I think is 30 bucks and it's only like 120. I think I paid a hundred. I think I paid maybe 90 bucks for it. I use it every single set. I think you guys are probably seeing me use it here a million times anyway. Uh, let's go. Actually, let's go to the textures you guys get for free as members of the channel. And thanks for that. Hey, I haven't shown my patron slide for a while. There you go. Thanks, everybody. Oh, it doesn't have the newest one on there. Edwin has upgraded. Edward Curry and has upgraded to channel professional buddy, which means you get this Photoshop file at the end on when we're all done. So thanks for that, man. Appreciate you. So. Go with this one. Is it going to be before art schools do prompt engineering? You know, what's funny is my neighbor's kid just left like Monday to go to art school. And I said, I really hope that a major part of their education is dealing with this because this isn't going away. This is going to be in their face. But, you know, most of the people that teach at universities are not actively working anymore. You know, they're not in this environment. So I wonder how helpful it's actually going to be. It's impossible to know how well that's going to actually work out for her. I hope it works out really well. I need to upscale this, but. And I need to service. So lift the lift the blacks up a bit so there's no true black now. Just lift it up a little bit. to do this again. Oh, yeah. Actually, go and grab a channel. Put this in red. A red green channel. Let's just select this one. We'll go here and we'll put a layer on it. can take this and put it in a group. And then I can put a mask on the group. Certain parts of it. From that, which is beautiful, this, which I like better. Um, it's just got more personality. But this looks great. Did I make it better? I don't know. I made it different. It's just it's just good. Right off the bat, it's good. But because you have a flat background, because this was ZBrush, um, again, if you use ZBrush, I'll have to put that as a prompt of the day. I think that's a good idea. Um, good idea, Scott. Uh, if you put ZBrush in there, it will remove the background. Uh, is what ZBrush looks like, right? So this is probably ZBrush as well. 
this one, my thought was that we could go and I'm not going to do this now because we're running a little long, but I just want to show you how, how I would handle this is in situations where I want to add some glow to things, I would go and just grab like this blue here and I'd probably grab a pretty, we want to add one of these, um, kind of pour that in and because it's on its own layer, we can use the hue and saturation adjustment layer and we can take what's up to saturate. This, okay. Oops. So once we've got it done once, now we take these, we group them together, we can duplicate them. Well, it's, actually, let's just flatten this. Now we can take and duplicate it and put it to screen and we can uh, blur it. So blur, blur. And then blur it again. Do the exact same thing. So just take this huge, this layer and again, duplicate it and then blur it again. Uh, but eventually we're going to want to do is change the blending mode um, to kind of accent it. Or do is we're affecting the the outside ones. And I'm gonna probably add some white in there. A brighter, a bright color. So that's how I would go through and I would add, like I've just add, roughly add where I wanted the light to be and then start with that blurring process to kind of just kind of keep going around things. And what's nice is that once you've got this set up, you can start to draw in those areas. Like if we make these smart layers, then you can sit there and draw in and it'll just work. A few people do this differently, by the way. There's like a whole bunch of ways to do this. Let's do another way. I mean, there's, there's a literally an unlimited number of ways to do this. I think. So we pick like that color. We can do a solid color adjustment layer over the entire screen. And we can come back and um, set the bunny mode. So, um, let's do overlay. And then we do is we turn this, this mask off. Now if we come in with the brush, oops. with the brush, a black or white brush, use a white brush. We can brush in and I'll put my, my flow down to like maybe and brush in where we want it. So say for example, that, that this here, this is really kind of causing a glow in through. Affected by that. that little touch of blue that we want to and we don't have to go through and clean paint. I want to add blue stripes in here. Anyway, get the idea. Just kind of fun way to alter or mess with the, to make it your own. Don't stop with the prompt, right? Take take some time and, and artsy it up for yourself. Make it your own piece of art. That's just one thing. I don't know that I love what I'm doing right now, but I'm just giving you some concepts or some ideas on things you can do. With it. Yeah. It's fun. It's real. <laughs> I think this is just too adorable. And this is just great. Um, again, I think we improved upon it. Um, I need to upscale it so I can actually work on it. Again, I don't like working on these tiny ones. It just, I cannot get the level of detail that I need. This is only 540 pixels, so I need I need this at least 2,000. I prefer closer to 10,000, which is my camera. 
Same with this. This one. Well, these are all. So I need to upgrade, upgrade the size of all those files to do something, something else with them. Anyway, that's what I have for today. That was my, my cyborgness. So I haven't really decided which one of these I like yet. I think I'm still exploring because it is super easy to set this thing up. I'm going to have to do a video on it because it is a little complicated. Um, but I, I, uh, let me show you, by the way, how you upgrade this thing. Cause this is where it gets amazing. I am going to, I am going to take a second to show you this. Cause this is, this is cool. I'm gonna go back to my screen here. All right. But we'll do the side of the head cam. All right. So let's do a uh, command prompt. Cause I just want to show you how easy this is to upgrade. So I right now have stable diffusion installed on my, um, on my D drive. So I just go here and I can do get pull. And once you install, you need Anaconda or Miniconda, I should say, installed. You need Git installed, G-I-T. And then you just go and you grab the stable diffusion from GitHub. I can do Git pull and it will pull it down, right? So we've got that and then we've got the, um, the web UI, which is the nice web interface. So I can do Git pull here. And right. So if there were any changes that I didn't have locally, this is it. I just do this and I'm done. And... Um, that's it. Now this, this, uh, let me give you the, I'll give you the, where I got this again. I, I did not make a video on it yet. Um, this is where I got it is from, this is up here. I'll put this in the chat for you folks. So all you do is you go grab this, this, you still get a code. You click on code and click on this copy icon. And you go back to your command prompt and you go to like um, whatever drive you have on. And so, so in your D drive, for example, you do git clone and, and then you, this is how you do it. So if you do this, it will install stable diffusion locally for you. And then you just have to go and get the models and the models. Again, the explanations on how to get those are actually right down here. This guy has where you go and download the two models. So the models are what make this work. So you have to have the model. So if you want to use real ESR again to upsize the models. You'll need to download the model there. If you wanted to automatically fix the faces for you, which you can do with GFP GAN, you can add that as well. So again, these are great little check boxes that this thing will just do all this work for you locally. But again, I set this up, let it run all night long, come back and look at 500 pictures, which takes me 15, 20 minutes to go through uh, and see what images I want to keep from that um, or what pieces I want to keep. Cause again, I'm one of these people, I collect way too much stuff. And then later on, I'm like, Oh, I wish I had this. I probably have that, which is handy. Um, anyway, so this is the this is exactly the process that I'm using to install it. Now the interface looks a lot better than this now, um, but you can kind of get the idea. Uh, it's all cut off. Why is it cut off? Darn it! It's these it's these things over here that are a cool part. Um, they can't really quite see it here. Make us bigger, maybe. Uh, so you can have it. It'll write the samples to the log file so you can know what your quotes were or what your prompts were. It'll save individual files. And then it will also, you can check it and it'll run the face fix for the eyes and all that stuff. And it will actually upsize them too. So you could throw all your mid journey stuff into a folder and have it run through and do GFP GAN and real, real ESR GAN to it and you'd be done. Uh, so it could probably take care of all that stuff for you. So this is like a really great uh, pain-free way to fix some of the more common stuff that we have going on right now. Uh, plus, there's an editor page which lets you in um, kind of out paint and in paint, but it's a little buggy right now. So I'm just going to give it a couple days before I make a video on it, and then you guys can see how to do it. I'll show how to do the whole install. So if I confuse the crappity right there, I'm sorry. Um, but this is the tool I'm using, and I just gave you the link for it. Um, so with a little bit of Googling, uh, you could get ahead of me and get it installed. Uh, but I will be doing a video on it and then how I use it. But that's the thing that I'm using to generate all these. Um, these wonderful cyborgs that I have built up here, as well as so much other stuff. I mean, I've got, I have so many images that are not cyborg related that again, I have um, made just letting it run. And of course I have the Cthulhu theme stuff going in too. Cause have you met me? Like, <laughs> but anyway, that's, uh, that's, that's what I got for you guys today. That was my, my Tuesday morning, Tuesday morning ish live stream. It was a bit long today, but um, I was, I wanted to work on it. And I think we had a lot of fun. I hope that was helpful. Like the the word, the way that I approach prompting and the way I work through prompting. Um, I hope that was helpful. Again, this video will be up for about 24 hours. Then it'll go in with all the other member videos I've been making for what two years now. 
Um, so everything from retouching skin to all that stuff is all yours. For five bucks, you can down or you can watch all of them. So for five bucks a month, obviously, then you get to keep the new ones. But it does not work on AMD that I'm aware of. I know they're working on versions of that, and there are a couple. That specific one does not. There are some that are much easier to install, by the way. There's some that are that run in something called um, uh, Docker that work. There's also some that just you just download it and run it, and it handles everything. But this one's open source, and uh, this guy's really responsive. Like I've been telling him, hey, I think this is this is a problem, and he fixes it. Uh, so I'm actually contributing to him monthly too. So he gets he gets five bucks from me every month, um, and I'm hoping a lot of other people do that too. So if you use that system and you like that system, then you give that guy five bucks. I mean, it's five five bucks. Uh, I'm a big fan of trying to support financially the people that I like. I buy art, I hang it on my walls, I do that kind of thing, um, and you give back and you find people give back to you too. And I think that's a great way to live life. So uh, I do that in in my professional career as well as you know just for fun. But everybody, thanks for coming out, for hanging around with me today. I appreciate it. Um, really appreciate it. So uh, we will uh, we'll do this again next week, and we'll do this probably again later this week. Oh, next week I am traveling. I am in uh, Knoxville. I'm in Chattanooga first of all, and doing about twelve or fifteen boudoir sessions, and then I'm in Knoxville on Thursday and I'm body painting. So if you live in the Knoxville area and you want to come and photograph that, holler because um, I'm going to be painting. I'll uh, be painting a female um, and then we'll be photographing her. And I'm probably going to try and take some of that and push it into mid journey and stable diffusion later and make a big old piece of art out of it. Uh, so if you guys want to come and see that and you live in Knoxville, otherwise I'll be in Orlando, Florida in about three weeks uh, doing the same thing. I'll be body painting down there. And then I will be in um, Portland, Oregon in October, uh, middle of October as well. So those are the ones that are on the books and I've got other ones, Florida, Texas are all coming up as well, but that's next year. Anyway, Everybody, thanks for coming out and hanging with me. Uh, Appreciate you all, and I will catch you all next time. Take care.